Sounds fairly good. Oh, yeah, Oliver Twist. You know, I, it's like it's like it's did like you, Shakespeare. Wait, did like, you just really just say Dickens? It's Charles like Dickens, the most boring. Charles Dickens. <laughs> I mean, that was like pure torture having to read that in grade school. You need to know all the opening lines. Uh, you know, like I couldn't follow nine, it. I, I what couldn't. about this one? What's this one? They call me Ishmael. Oh, that's uh, yeah. the whale. Moby Dick. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Why? Wait, are we going with we're going with Dick and Moby Richard? Yeah. <laughs> so here, funny funny story, right? We have to read my senior year. We have to read a book for uh, my to, to pass, and it's Honor Majesty's Secret Service by Ian Fleming, yeah, right? Yeah. And so instead of reading the book, what we do is we go I, a bunch of my buddies. We all go ahead and we watch the movie, movie. okay? And my buddy Stan uh, from Arizona, right? He's one of the guys, and we're watching the we're watching the movie, and then we go the next day and we take the test, right? And so we're all finished. And my teacher grabs the things, and he's, he's taking all our stuff, right? And he looks at it, and he goes, I guess he goes, uh, Matt, can you uh, stand over here for just a second? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, uh, Stan, can you stand over there? And he, he pulls like four of us out of the way, and he goes, he goes, how'd you like the movie, fellas? <laughs> <laughs> I assume it's different than the book? Yeah. So the movie ends different than the book. Yeah. It's about three quarters of the way through. It just completely changes. And all of a sudden, you're like, yeah, and he goes, you guys fail. And I ended up having to go to summer school well, see, for that. See, the funny thing should have been the opposite. He should have given you an A for improvising because that's what education is really yeah. about. It's not yeah. memorizing stuff. It's about improvising and learning how to I think. I think that's the Marines you're thinking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I, I mean, I thought that was, you know, no, it was, it was definitely fair. I mean, we, we cheated. We lied. Yeah, yeah. We, we did all that stuff. So, I mean, it, it kind of works like that. Well, well, you know, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. That's what Joe Kennedy said. <sighs> you know, <laughs> Joe Kennedy, wasn't Joe Kennedy a giant piece of shit? Yeah, but he was the matriarch of the Kennedy family. Before a, a, he was. a bunch of tragedies befell most of their Yeah, clans. I was going to say, didn't all of them die? I mean, after Joe Kennedy, didn't didn't his son died? Robert Kennedy, yeah. John F. Kennedy Jr., John Jr. Yeah. Some guy, some, some guy skied into a tree. I don't know. Wow, <laughs> that is awesome. Jack, what are you doing there? Did you turn it down or up? Turn it down just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we are uh, doing this live, right? And I think we got to get this started. All right. Oh, we haven't already? No. Oh. Yeah, Ted, this, I'm not, re- I never record, remember? Oh, that's right. Nothing, <laughs> nothing we talk about is ever recorded. This is just for, for oh, Ted. I forgot, yes. Okay. All right. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Real Three Idiots podcast, live from 1090 Brewing in Glenview, Illinois. Woo! Oh, man. It's- I told you that laugh track and clap track would work. <laughs> Okay, yeah, everybody, everybody's listening right now, and it's like, hey, man, it sounds like actually somebody's there. Jack, turn that down a little bit, would you? It sounds like actually somebody's there, but it is. Now, this place is awesome. Now, it's uh, 1090 Brewing is really cool. It's two actual rooms, right? So there's a tap room uh, that we are not in and a brewing room, which is kind of like a crack. This is like a crack house for a crackhead, right? It's like Charlie's uh, Chocolate Factory. Oh, wait. So if I start drinking from the taps, am I going to... The bubbly fizzy juice or whatever? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait. Are there midgets? No. Oh. Little people. Little people. Yeah, they're oh, all... man. You know I got a midget thing. I... Oh, wait. Okay. I'm sorry. A little people impressive, thing, right? Impressive vats filled with different, you know, beers. Obviously. Yeah. This is... Uh, honestly, yeah. honestly, it's... This is... I, I have an erection. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. Well, I think if yeah. you were even in a frat in college, I don't think you could handle this much beer. You know, this was like a pony keg. This is a pony keg. <laughs> no, I feel like when, when we were in college, I feel like this was the amount of beer we wanted. I mean, it would have killed us, but yeah, this is this is like, I'm pretty sure when we sat around, we were all drunk and high, and we were talking about it. We were just like, hey, you know what? Uh, one day, man, I, I want to own a brewery, man, and I, you know, I'm just going to have yeah, kegs everywhere. And that's Yeah, I don't even care if I make money, man. I just want people to be happy and me to be drunk, you know? Sounds like you own a, own a dispensary. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I don't. Ted, could you? Wait, this would be a lot of dope, right? I mean, I'm looking at these giant bins, and this would be a lot of dope. You I think, couldn't. I think brewery and breweries and dispensaries are things we really didn't even think about back then, you know? No. I didn't know where no. beer came from. No. Beer was just, beer was just a magic yeah. thing that you went to the store and you bought, right? There was just hams and straws and bush light. Old style. Don't oh. get me started on bush light. <laughs> but, you know. Bush light is good under certain circumstances. I even I've already I, talked about that. Johnny, when's the last time you saw Teddy have a beer? Oh, it's been a long time. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I, I can't remember. You, you can't. That's that's a random beer that someone put yeah, down. Yeah, that's not your beer, Ted. Yeah, it's really <laughs> weird. Okay, so this place is awesome. We got a packed house. Um, one of the cool things is is there are a lot of former uh, guests 
from the show Live, here right yes. now. Yeah, I'm looking around, and it's weird to see him sober. It's like it's like the ghost of Christmas past. Yeah, I, you know, all of our guests, you know, the, especially the first time, if you've been on more than once, the first time you get on, and you get really drunk. Okay, I mean, everybody does. Yeah. Right. I mean, Brian was like shit stew drunk. <laughs> We shouldn't say that just in case somebody who knows Brian is here. But, yeah, he was super stewed. And I know my sister was at least, the first time, at least a bottle and a half of wine into this before we even got started, right? And that was awesome. No, that was totally awesome. Everybody gets loose. You get loose in your own special way. Teddy, you like to, uh, you were actually in the car, like, rubbing one out, right? Uh, not exactly. <laughs> you, I was actually running around some oil of Olay, to be honest with you. Yes, I did use some. Because I have sunspots, so I did do some more than So this is true. This listen, we go on a we go on a trip. I right? love that stuff, by the way. Yeah. He does. We go on a trip to Arizona, and Teddy has to stop to get some lotion, right? And he has been talking about it the whole time. And he goes and he gets the most expensive lotion, oil of Olay, and it's all. He, and he's like, "This is great." And he puts some on his hand, and I'm driving. I'm driving in a car. Did, did my hands grow? Listen, you, you put some <laughs> on your hand, and he rubs it on my face and tells me how great it is. I'm. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. We had had a couple of drinks, right? And now I'm driving the car with a, an adult man who's rubbing lotion on my face. And I think automatically, I have to unzip my pants, right? This has got to happen, right? Teddy's going to... I'm like, this is... No, I think you just misinterpreted the situation. No. Teddy, I, I was figuring that was KG, right? That's kind of gay. You're not totally gay, right? But... Wait, hey. do, I, do I have to remind you where I went to preschool again? Well, where'd, you, where'd you go to preschool, Teddy? Yes, yeah, sir. I went to a preschool... Scouts on are the name of the place. This is back in the 70s. It was, it was called, you're going to laugh again. It's called Gay Time. <laughs> but that was, the, that was the name of the place. I love that. And, and it worked. The, and the only, pla- the, only, the only thing, I, the only thing, <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. You're right. I'm very happy now. So, so the only thing I remember about Gay Time was they forced you to take a nap at like 12 in the afternoon. And when you're five, six years old and you got like a ton <laughs> of energy. You. And you wake up with your pants <laughs> off. <laughs> And you might have had ADD at the time, even though that wasn't a real diagnosis at the time. And they forced you to take a nap in the middle of the day, and they serve you. I think it was called uh, Chicken a la King, which was like the grossest. Oh, oh, that, is, that stuff is terrible. And I would just. Chicken a la King is one of the worst things on the planet. It's like taking Ipecac or something. would just get violently <laughs> nauseous is, just that smelling is, that stuff. Oh, <laughs> man, that is horrible. Okay, so uh, my son actually invited some of his friends today, and I'm pretty sure they're just here to hear me say masturbate in a room full of people. So, <laughs> guys. Uh, here it came, and yeah, yeah, you know what? Everybody no, in this no, room no is... No pun intended. No, but everybody in this room, I think, has heard me say that. Whoever you are, you have probably heard me say the word masturbate, but and you probably never, expected me to say it. But they've never seen you say it until now. No, they, <laughs> they were all in the room when I've said it, Ted. I've literally said masturbate to everyone in here. I was talking the, the first 30 times. Oh, the first 30 <laughs> times. Okay. And, you know, I just thought of something. If all these people are here listening to the show live, they're not going to listen to it online and we just lost some revenue so drop here's what i need you guys to do pretend like you are not paying attention uh imagine this is an entire show of ted's tips for 20s okay (laughs) don't pay attention and then when you get home listen to this okay because this is actually costing us a lot of money like at least 30 or 40 cents okay (laughs) all right so uh let me introduce everybody and that's how we kind of get this whole thing started but with me as always is the ill-prepared and beltless ted ted Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> I did have to write something down today, just, just this one time. So this, Teddy has actually, so, wait, what's on the other side of that? It's not your concern. So you just had a piece of paper from work and you wrote some crap down on it. What is, <laughs> Teddy, is, is, was that your will? What, what do you think it's is going to happen it's here? Will. It's, it's a living will? Let's just say he I, should shred it after this. Well, yeah. I am worth more dead than alive. You know that, right? You, you are to us, yes. Yeah, exactly. and, you're just, and you're just dead to me. Actually, you know what, Teddy, you know what's funny? We might be the only person you are worth more alive to than dead. Because I, yeah. I know your wife wants that's, you dead. That's why I'm here. Yeah, yeah. I know your wife well, that's wants why, you that's dead. That's why I don't buddy. eat the soup. Or walk near stairs. <laughs> I, love that. I love that joke. That is my favorite joke of all time. She didn't eat the soup. That's why she fell out down the steps. All right. Gotcha. And to my military left, which I don't understand what that is. I don't, I don't understand that. Um, is a man who clearly hates the state of Texas, Johnny. No, I do not hate the state of Texas, but hello, everyone. You, you don't hate the state of Texas? I mean, I don't think I could live there in the heat, but, uh, you know. Okay. All right. Um, before we get to our very special guests, um, I want to thank uh, last week's guest, Peter Alexopoulos from Sportsman's Resource Training in Niles, Illinois. Um, if you guys want to learn to use a gun safely, call Mr. Gun. That's the nickname I gave him, Mr. Gun. Is that pretty cool? I thought he that knows was pretty his cool. stuff. Yeah, he does. Uh, you know what? I'd love a cool nickname like Mr. Gun. Yeah. 
Yeah. Actually, he, he gave me a very Manny informative Manny Pants tip. isn't going to kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah, Captain Piss Pants. <laughs> Captain Piss Pants is probably the worst nickname of all time. So thank you. Well, thank you very much Well, actually, bed wedding is a serious medical condition, so we shouldn't make fun of it. Unless, well, unless you're 55 years old. Wait, we, we have to make fun of bed wedding. It's, it's, the greatest, it's the greatest thing on the planet. Well, you just don't have to get up. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, and so, you know, one thing about Peter is um, last week I asked him at the end of the show uh, to give me a hand grenade guy. Because I wanted some tips on hand grenading. And it's actually called, <laughs> in case you guys didn't know this, it's called hand grenading. Yeah, when you throw hand grenades yeah. or you play around with hand grenades, it's called hand grenading. Makes sense. So he gave me, I talked to him, he gave me two great tips. He said, number one, he said, don't pull the pin when you play catch with a hand grenade. Makes sense. Okay, makes sense. Second tip, he said, under no circumstances should you ever play catch with a hand grenade. <laughs> yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool. That's good. Who's yeah. that guy from the Giants, that uh, Jason Pierre Paul? He like blew off his hand. <laughs> <laughs> doing, <laughs> doing, doing fireworks. fireworks. <laughs> And now he's actually still playing in the league, but like he's got like a stub for like a, a hand. And he's got like half a thumb, and he's missing some fingers. I guess he could still tackle people, of course. But you know, yeah. But if you're rich, don't you? I mean, if you're hanging out with a bunch of guys, like you got like a posse, right? Don't you have like a fireworks guy, so you don't have yeah. to? Just like Snoop Dogg has a has a, a doobie roller guy. D- yeah. Did you say doobie? Fifty thousand dollars a year. Fifty thousand a year. Fifty thousand a year. Just roll them joints. That's that's the guy's only job. Oh man, you know what? That's actually the kind of that's actually the kind of job I want. Okay, so if you're new to the show, and we always have new listeners, and we've got people here that have probably never heard the show before, um, let me explain how this works. Okay, um, John is going to read some inspirational passages from the Bible. Um, I do a segment called Knitting with an Idiot, and Ted talks about Hitler. So that pretty much, yeah, that's that pretty it. much sums up how this works, right? And then we commit social suicide. <laughs> But, Teddy, if you had to tell, like, people ask me all the time, like, what is this show about? What would you tell them? What would you say? People ask, have to ask you, like, Teddy, what's the show about? What it's would about you say? nothing, Jerry. It's about, it's about, it's full of whimsy and haberdashery and random musings. Like Isn't haberdashery about. a hat? It is. Isn't that a place to buy a hat? Yes. What was that show, The Hateful Eight? That was, or that show, the movie Hateful The Hateful Eight? Eight? That was Minnie's Haberdashery. It was like a store okay. that sold, sold sundries. Quentin Tarantino. And, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> All right, I, I, I don't understand the haberdashery part, but no. I, I can get this. Okay, so right now, um, I was supposed to introduce our guests. They were supposed to be two ladies from the Chicago Blitz. We got ghosted. Um, yeah, we got ghosted. <laughs> the Women's 7-on-7 seven seven Football League. Um, but I literally got this text about five minutes ago because I, I, you know, I, I don't know what was going to happen. But it said, uh, Matt, the ladies were arrested for doing 105 miles an hour in a 30. You ready for this? Running over a couple of pedestrians. They tested positive for steroids, were busted for drug drug trafficking, attempted murder, and spousal abuse. That was all on the way here. Was one of them named Ann Hesch? (laughs) (laughs) No, I feel like like in one traffic stop, they did the whole NFL in the whole year, right? The the whole NFL in one year. It's kind of crazy. So ironically, you mentioned Ann Hesch. Wasn't she married to another female? Ellen. Ellen, Was she married to Ellen DeGeneres? Yeah, she was married to Ellen DeGeneres. So anyway, so ironically, before that accident, she was actually on a podcast. I didn't know yes. that. And she was doing vodka with wine chasers or wine with vodka chasers. Yeah. And, she, then, she, and then she bought a red wig yeah. at a local store and wherever in Beverly Hills. A red she was wig? Talking. A, red, a red wig. And then she, she caressed the <laughs> clerk's face because... With, the, Wait a minute. with she, that lotion that you she, use? She caressed, she caressed the, with she, oil of Olay. Yeah. So the clerk said she seemed lucid and rational, but then she, cor- she caressed his face for some unexplained reason and then she got then she drove through somebody's yard so she <laughs> she talked about all the alcohol stuff and then uh and then obviously got into a crash and so they pulled that podcast really uh but they what? had yeah but the production company had a copy of it so they they still got a copy of it so that's why we never drink while we're on the show never we yeah okay every time every time we're pretending when, when it sounds like john's opening up a can he's not really doing it's a that. sound effect yeah, so there's no drinking at all. We're just stoned out of our minds right now. Yeah, so that's all right. Okay, so we do have a plan B, and I thought this plan B was pretty exciting. So I'd like everybody to welcome Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I just got a text. All right, all I right. I just got a right. text. It says, um, dear idiots, please stop harassing Mr. McConaughey. There is no chance. He- okay, this that's is not going to happen. Cease and desist order. Okay, is it, so- isn't he from Texas? He is. He was going to run for governor. He was going to run for governor. Yeah. Run for governor yeah. of that's, Texas. that's not real. That's probably why he didn't come. Of course not. not. Okay, so Teddy, I'm I'm Plan A and Plan B. Go ahead with Plan C. What do you have? In terms of <laughs> a guest, yeah, Ted, yeah Teddy. I just, I just have tips and random musings. You have and tips. have a dash three. You have <laughs> and tips have and that's all you have is tips and random musings. Just oh, this minute, I might have man. something more later. 
<laughs> All right. You know what? I figured there'd be a few hiccups on our first live show, but the guests not showing up and threatening to be sued because, you know, that was part of the text Definitely where Mr. McConaughey was very clear that we should never mention his name. Let me ask you a question. No. <laughs> Would it really be interesting if there was a celebrity on this show? I mean, other than the fact, okay, let's just say, okay, he's an actor. He's well known. But, I mean, he's just some, he's just some, some dude. He's going to come on here. He's going to talk about just normal, mundane te- things that, you know, we can get. Anybody to talk about. He probably has better stories than we do. Yeah. I mean, behind the movie scene stories. But, I mean, is he really going to be that charismatic? It's not like you're having, like, Babe Ruth. It's not like having Babe Ruth on the show. Well, Babe Ruth is dead. That would be amazing. (laughs) If we could get Babe Ruth on the show, I I feel like any dead dead baseball player, any dead celebrity would be awesome. (laughs) That would be amazing. Yeah, that would be the best. Well, that would be a huge breakthrough. Yeah. (laughs) We'd get those uh, murder crime podcasts to run for the money, huh? Oh, give me. Yeah. Maybe start a we have dead people on our show. That'd be, you know what? We have dead people on, and then they tell, tell us how, how they, they died. died. And then we, we like, dispel to completely all those people. Like, here's our theory. Uh, we think that he was attacked by a Martian. I think you need to erase that last part, because I think that's a podcast. Oh, bring on dead people bring and on. let them tell us how they died. Well, what about Damn those, what it. Now everyone, everyone listening knows that we're going to, okay, that's all right, though. Okay. We could completely change the way we're doing We don't have to talk about knitting at all. We could literally talk about dead people. What about those psychics like Sylvia Brown and there's like another guy like Vanderbeek or something? You know, I don't know. James if Vanderbeek? Whatever his name is. They're like charlatans, but you know, they, they can predict. Like, <laughs> is you know, he an actor? They, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, he's got a similar, he's got like a Dutch name, but you know, so the, the police hire these people as consultants and then they, they take the victim's clothing and they're playing with it and, and they can figure out like where the body is I allegedly. Always, I always thought you were Greek, Ted. <laughs> Why are you talking with your hands? Are you Italian? Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're literally like... So so wait, you're saying they, they play with the body. So if no, no, I, no, no, if they, I started they, playing with myself, no, that's a show. No, there's a missing body. So <laughs> the police hire them as a consultant. Oh, yeah. And then they give them a piece of clothing from the victim's home. And then almost like a bloodhound, instead of smelling the clothing, they just hold it and just kind of look, you know, heavenward and are able yeah, to somehow it's probably only in the piece movies together. Where they do but you know that's not real, right? No, but it is real. That's why I'm, I'm bringing it up. I'm not talking about like movies. Those there, is, type movies. there is no, you know what? You know what? I want to, we'll have, we'll have police officers on like detectives on yeah. from every place in the world and they can tell us how many times a psychic actually helped them well you know, Harry, you know harry houdini when his mother died he was actually obsessed with like finding out what happened to her so he was his mission in life before he died was to bust these Crossover. fake psychics yeah like you know like they have seances and he would like open the lights and there'd be like wires and stuff with something coming down from the ceiling and so, then someone punched him in the stomach punched him in the gun. Well, he wasn't ready he wasn't yeah. ready for it yeah so. Wait, is that how Harry Houdini really died? Yeah. Somebody punched him in the stomach? Yeah, I think it was before one of his uh, – he's got this one where they – it's like – so picture a vat like that, and he's, he's chained up, <laughs> oh, and he's upside down. Hold on, for everybody who's, everybody who's listening and isn't here, a vat like that is – you know, <laughs> a vat like that. Yeah, Just like, picture a vat. Like a you know, like that. A 100-gallon vat. So they would chain him up. His, his, his routine was they chain him up upside down, and they would submerge him in the water, and he'd have to get out of, like, the restraints. Yeah. And little did people know he was actually double-jointed, so he could actually dislocate both his shoulders. Uh, but yeah, but someone I think punched him. But the punching thing was yeah. a, just a bar trick he would do, where he would let people punch him. He could take yeah. a punch in the stomach, yeah. and one time he couldn't. Yeah. Well, he wasn't ready so for what it. A t- what so. a terrible bar trick! Yeah. That's got to be the worst bar trick of all time. You just walk in and like, hey man, punch me in the stomach. Because <laughs> wouldn't you? I mean, wouldn't you? You know what I, w- I would have done? I would have just kicked him in the balls. I would have just been like, bam, or just oh, or just vomit all over you. <laughs> no, you just, and you do like this. Oh, I I'm sorry. I'm from Norway. That is how I punch people in the stomach. Yes. I like that. Okay, um, guys, before we get to Ted's tips for 20s, I, I kind of did something. I hope you guys are cool with this. I signed us up for a couple of Facebook groups. Okay, are you guys cool with that? Uh, I guess I am now since I didn't sign a waiver. Uh, well, you don't really need a waiver. So you guys remember how there were Christians against dinosaurs? We talked about that, right? Vaguely. You vaguely remember that? Vaguely. Oh, that was the time but you didn't were didn't dinosaurs super... exist like millions of years before people? Oh, I do That's remember why that. when you see that. people yeah, yeah. and dinosaurs yeah. in the same scene that's not really accurate well no they were just against dinosaurs <laughs> ted you have no, see this is the beauty of this ted has no idea we talked no, about I, that I because talking, i do remember talking about you that. do remember that yeah i do okay well i signed us up for a couple of more face groups um i signed us up for christians against ms marvel and christians against she hulk yes real real things i signed us up for that you guys cool with that that's fine okay the christians um so they've got enough real things now they are going against uh, movies Okay, and comic books. So the Christians don't like Ms. Marvel. I guess it's a new TV show because she is Muslim and gay. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. double whammy. Right. And their, their contention is, is that there's not enough um, white, straight uh, characters. Yeah, there's not enough white straight characters in superhero dumb. But wouldn't they inadvertently make the show more popular by, by trying to ban it or go against it? 
Well, yeah. inadvertently. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming that. But, I mean, the fact you, that we're talking about it, because if that didn't exist, we wouldn't even, it wouldn't we, even be we brought wouldn't up. Even, yeah, we wouldn't even be talking about it. Yeah, I never heard so of that. So Ms. Marvel it's already pretend. wins. Ms. It's, Marvel already wins. Yeah. But, but they're going after things that are pretend. That's the beauty of it, right? I mean, it's not Sesame even real. Sesame Street, Disney. Sesame Street is pretend. Aren't there, wait, aren't there people's hands in those puppets? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know what always creeped me out? The marionette. That always creeped me out. The marionette with the strings. That's not my that, puppet. Those that's are, not my yeah, those are, that creeped those me are out. really weird. <laughs> those are really weird. Now, they're also, Christians are also against She-Hulk because, and this is, this is really interesting, she's taking away strong male characters. Yeah, she's kind of doing away with that because, again, in superhero dumb, in pretend superhero dumb, there's not enough male characters. Well, remember, so, you know, what about Spider-Man, the movie Dead- Superman. Remember the movie Deadpool? Wasn't there like a female, like, you know, she wasn't like a She-Hulk, but she was like, you know, one of the uh, villains in the movie Deadpool. She was like a real strong female yeah. character who like beat the crap out of like Dude, the she real. Dude, she was hot. Yeah. Dude, she was hot, man. I bet she could punch you in the stomach and that would be <laughs> awesome. So that's, that's my problem with people these days. Um, they are, they want to not let people have certain things, even though it's not taking anything away from them, right? Like all the superheroes still exist and they add a female superhero. Right. And it's like, no, you can't do that. It's like, it's not hurting anyone. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. Um, did you hear Cracker, Bar- Cracker Barrel is serving a plant-based sausage? Excellent. Thank you very I, much, I heard Cracker about, I heard Barrel. about that, and they, and they were actually accused of being woke. They're, yeah. They're not taking any of the sausages away that have meat in them. <laughs> they're just adding a vegetarian. Can we just say sausages yeah. again? <laughs> there's, still okay. a, there's still a Jimmy Dean sausage on the menu then. Um, no, but, at Cracker Barrel? Well, Jimmy I mean, Dean. A Jimmy Dean type sausage, not yeah. Jimmy Dean. Some guy sense. pasted on his Facebook, speaking of Facebook, he literally posted on his Facebook, he said... Uh, you can take my pork sausage. Mind you, they're not trying to take anything away. They're just adding right. something. But you can take my pork sausage when you pry it from my cold, dead hands. Don't tread on my pork. <laughs> Wait, is it, wasn't, wasn't there like a more wasn't there a more like important saying that actually went with, uh, there was in yeah, the Revolutionary yeah, yeah. War? Yes. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, I thought that was uh, Charlton Heston. You can you can take my gun from my cold, dead hands. Yeah. No, it, it's just kind of weird, like, like just because they're adding stuff. Because I told you guys, like, when, when, when I was listening to that Marjorie Taylor Greene thing, when she was going off on, like, electric cars and, and vegetarians. And I'm like, what, how, does that, how does that bother you? I don't even understand yeah. it. It makes no sense to me. Well, it's a manufactured crisis is what it is. Right, right, yeah. right. So I just had one thought, by the way, with superheroes. If Superman were gay, <laughs> would, he, would he be a power top? He's not gay? No, I mean, I just, I just, I don't understand how that would work. Like, is, is that really what it is? Is that how it would work? Well, I think he could just have his way with you no matter what. So I mean, he would, <laughs> just, I think we just change it up on a nightly basis. You know? He would be a dangerous power top. He would. I mean, just think about it. Superman could. Yeah, yeah. He'd be safer if he was a power bomb. You would not want to be Superman's girlfriend, right? I mean, no. I mean, how Lois Lane could walk the next day is like it seems impossible, right? Like she, he would have to really. Uh, I don't. I don't want to think about that. Okay, Teddy, are you ready for Ted's tips for twenties? Well, I guess I am now. All right. Everybody, everybody is here for this, just so you know. Okay. Well, hopefully not just this. Well, no. Because they might is... be sorely disappointed. Oh, they're going to be sorely disappointed, <laughs> Ted. Yeah. No when, they, when they hear us sing, they're going to be sorely disappointed. Yeah. Well, w- and, and right after well, that. Well, you've been called the songbird of our generation, so I'm not sure <laughs> what that means, you know? <laughs> I don't think so. I, I highly doubt that. All yeah. right, Johnny, are you ready? Ready. Okay. Do you have the time? To listen to Ted Wine about nothing and everything all at once. Ted is one of those melodramatic fools, neurotic to the bone, no doubt about it. Sometimes his tips hit girls the creeps, but Ted still has his tips this week. They aren't all adding up, but he'll have you cracking up. Is Ted just paranoid, or is he stoned? (laughs) Good one. That's a good one. Now, before you do that, can you fix my microphone? Yeah, a lot of pressure. Jeez. Ted, did you mess up your headphones again? Oh my God. Okay, so as soon as Ted takes, as soon as Ted takes any part of anything off, removes anything, it's automatically broken. He has trouble with. Don't don't add lib. Don't add lib. He has trouble with three-dimensional objects. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, that was a great intro, guys. That, uh, like I said, I, I think the song is better than <laughs> oh the tips these days. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say why. So. Okay, so hold on a second. You know what? The only reason I'm not getting up and kicking the shit out of you right now for saying the same damn thing because is that there's, there's 50 witnesses. witnesses. Yeah, because there's 50 witnesses here. And when you commit a felony in broad daylight, and I got your plates written down, by the way. So. What you do? No. 
You creepy son of a bitch. I knew that was you looking in my window. Oh, actually, you Sometimes gotta, he gives Matt you, the you, creeps. You gotta, you, you <laughs> he gives you know, all of us Actually, the you have to tell the story about how you riled up the Cubs fans at... Uh, nope. That, I did. Oh, I did, about how I almost got into a fight. Yeah. yeah, but you kind of induced it. I mean, you didn't like want to fight him for real, but it's just funny how they got so uh, bent out of Ted, shape about Ted, it. Ted, stop for one second. He's stalling. Ted, stop for one second. Yes, I did. Okay. I wanted... <laughs> uh, listen, I, I have not wanted to beat the shit out of somebody, like, but I wanted I was wanted to kick the shit out of both those guys. I absolutely wanted to kick the shit out of them. I actually walk into Howard Street, and I look for them so that I can just drag them out in a parking lot and kick the fuck I don't even <gasps> Dang. F-bomb oh wow. man swear jar you lose okay <laughs> and that was half of an F word okay okay it was so half an with F-word. that said I'll go into the tips okay All right. so here's the tips folks how to avoid getting canceled by your TikTok Instagram and Facebook crew and also with work and friends etc okay now here's the tip never let <laughs> I, I'm not laughing. <laughs> I just know how stupid this is going to be. No, this is actually good. This is good stuff. It, it, it sounds it, good. It sounds bit, like one of the best little, tips I've be, heard so far. It might be a little stupid. Okay, so never oh. let your inside voice come outside when discussing hot-button topic, topics such as race, abortion, religion, or Bears draft picks. <laughs> <laughs> you know okay. what? That's, that's not bad, but if you don't do that, then are you really having any fun? Listen, always be agreeable and noncommittal and neutral. Here's the here's the magic sentence. Here's the magic sentence you need to add to your vocabulary immediately. Pussy. When someone <laughs> says, "Hey, what do you think what's going on in Ukraine?" It's an unfortunate state of affairs. <laughs> <laughs> you need to add that sentence. Let me repeat that again. Every time someone says something incendiary, you're going to say, "It's an unfortunate state of affairs." <laughs> oh, I've just saved oh, I've just saved people's jobs, their oh, livelihood. Man. I did not know this was like a sing along. It's an unfortunate state of, of affairs. affairs. That, that seems so boring. What, how, wait, how are you going to get what, into a fight? What do you think about Roe v. Wade? It's an unfortunate state, state of affairs. affairs. Oh, I, I like that. I mean, I guess that's okay, but Now, Teddy, behind closed doors, you can scream your head off, yell in the mirror, wear women's underwear, whatever it is you do behind closed doors. But in public... Uh, Ted, we, talk, Ted we, <laughs> talked about not, we, te- we talked about not mentioning that, right? Yeah. I, we I, did. <laughs> I fully agree with all that. I think, um, I think the internet, the social media is a, a problem these days. It's like, you know how you get that anonymous feeling when you're in a car and you do things you probably mm-hmm. wouldn't do to someone, you know, if you were face-to-face with them. Sure. But when you're in a car, you feel anonymous. It's like social media, right? Yeah. Or like email, even like an email where you get angry. You, you know, you might send something out that you, you don't really mean to. And then, you, unfortunately, it's, you know, when you send something, post something on the Internet, you can't, you can't take out the or magic uh, eraser or the uh, Etch-A-Sketch and just shake it and it disappears. Unfortunately, it's there forever. So, you know, <sighs> I, I mean... I'm not personally, I'm not outraged what anyone says, you know, but people wake up and they're outraged and they demand apologies and, you know, they want, they want uh, their pound of flesh. You know, that's, that's the society we're living in today, unfortunately. So, so should, I mean, I, I have to be honest with you. So we were supposed to have two ladies from the seven on seven football league, right? And they did not show up. I mean, everybody's, I mean, all my. And listen, I blame you for that because you said you were going to get them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Listen, I do. I blame myself. But I know there's a lot of fellas here that are ready to walk out because the only thing they can see is us. And I'd walk out too. So, so I'll tell you, I'll tell you, the, quickly, I'll tell you a story, right? So as of last Monday, right? Not yesterday, but a week from, a week from yesterday, the, she was like, okay, we, we got, I got some, some girls come on. I'm like, okay, cool. That's awesome. And then. She's like, what time? I said, 6.30. She said, okay, 6.30. I said, that's cool. And then I, I, you know, about a day later, two days later, I'm like, hey, listen, can you give me the names of the, the girls? I, I like to communicate with them. I, you know, I, I kind of want to talk to them, get a little bio and a little background and everything. And I got ghosted. And I kept getting ghosted. And I kept getting ghosted. You sure this I, wasn't a Tinder app? <laughs> <laughs> Grinder. Wait, wait, she, she said, she, oh, yeah, Grindr. wait. I got, I got My it. name's Karen. Not that there's, <laughs> not there's anything wrong with Grinder. <laughs> No, not there's anything wrong with that. No, and, and, and so, so it kept on going, it kept on going, and so finally I just I think, I'm like, I'm like, if I don't hear anything from you in the next hour, I'm just going to assume that it's canceled, and, and we're good, and, you know, they're not coming. And then I thought, I got this chick's phone number, right? I have her phone number, and I'm thinking, I want to get some revenge, so I'm actually deciding, I have it written down right here, I'm actually deciding whether or not I want to give it out to yes. everyone in the world so that you can call her and get ghosted by her also. You guys can pretend that you have a podcast that no one is ever going to listen to, right? And that they're never going to show up to, and then you guys can just keep calling her. So I, I don't know. Should I do it? Hmm. I say we ask the audience. What do you think? They say no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Tra- Joey, hold, hold on, my, my buddy Chalmer, my buddy Chalmer, he is holding up his phone so that he can go ahead and call her right now. Okay, 
Chalmer, I will tell you this. She is attractive, okay? So you might want to get her over and, and you know, enjoy that. But, but she yeah, plays so, football, so she probably... No, no, no. She's not. No, she's the media, oh, person. The media person. She's the media person. Yeah. I, I mean, I was so freaked out by this, right? I was so excited. I'm like, because I don't know if you guys know this, but we talked about it on the show where we were going to try to be the voice of the uh, the X League football team, the Blitz, right? And I had it set up with me, and I, had t- I talked to one of the one of the girls I work with, Julia, and I'm just like, hey, listen, would you like to do like a, a Peyton and Eli thing for the seven on seven stuff, right? And so I, I pitched the whole thing, and the guy was just like, we want professional uh, announcers, and I'm like, for for a bunch of ladies half dressed playing football, and he's like, yes. I'm like, okay, man. I, I go, we're good. But then I got in touch with him again. I said, I want to have some girls on the on the show and kind of promote it. And so he's like, oh, yeah, we actually want to do this. He goes, I'm going to give you to our media person. And, we again, we traded emails for the first three days, four days. We traded emails back and forth. I, I honestly thought we were best friends. Yeah. So, I honestly thought so, that, so you know what happened? You, you, got, you got glimmered. That's what I, you got. You got glimmered. That's that's so mean, Ted. Yeah, well, I mean, but yeah. You, so you, a, sh- a shiny object was dangled in front of you in the distance. You walked toward it. Is, is the shiny object two hot girls that play football? Because if it's a shiny object, it's two hot girls that play football. Yes. It's gone. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, I'm, I'm really disappointed. But, you know. What, so, yes, give the phone number out. Yeah. Johnny I mean, is shaking it, his it, head. It must, no, Johnny. I feel like Johnny's the voice of reason. Let's, let's not burn that bridge just yet. Yeah. Let's, let's hold on to that. Yeah. Hold, that, hold we, that card. Don't, yeah. Don't play all your cards. Oh, man. I feel like I want to play all my cards right now. Okay. All right. Can we talk a little football? Yeah. Sure. Okay, we can talk a little football. Let's talk Aaron Rodgers. Yes. Okay, yes, yeah, I knew right? you were going there. So, so Aaron, Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers claims that his back-to-back MVP seasons are because of DMT, dimethyltryptamine. Ayahuasca? Yeah, it's, so that's what you make ayahuasca tea in, right? That's what you make that out of I- ayahuasca so tea. So it's like magic mushrooms and tea. Yeah, <laughs> so, so it is literally, it, so it's used in the Amazon for religious ceremonies and for getting totally wasted, okay? And cannibalism. Do they? Do the Amazon? Do well, people on Amazon eat? I, th- I eat think people? you just have. I think you just have to assume that everyone book your trip. Wait, the, shrunk, the shrunken heads. You know where, where do they come from? They come from the Amazon, and you know that's where they are. What, but why would you shrink a head if you're going to eat people? Well, that's just the, that's just the, that's just their dear relatives. If they're doing that to their relatives, imagine what they're going to do to you. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I, I have I have no idea what they would do to me. Are they going to eat me? It might be worse. So what no, is, what is no, worse you, than getting eaten? <laughs> what, what, they won't what, eat you. You taste funny. <laughs> Wait, I thought that was That's clowns. A clown, yeah, yeah. this is a clown joke. Okay, so here's the deal, right? So um, Rogers is taking this drug, right? And is, it a, is it a banned substance? No, it is, yes, it's illegal. It, hmm? No, it's totally illegal. Okay. Yeah, no, illegal, but it won't show up on uh, drug tests, the NFL drug tests, supposedly. Well, no, not if he's like, if he's saying it out like, loud. Like LSD, I think the only way you can test you for LSD is through a spinal tap. So, really? John. No. <laughs> I love that movie. So you have to watch the movie in order to get tested? That seems weird. But okay, so here's what I was thinking. And it's used in religious ceremonies. If I knew that I could just trip balls, I would go to church all the time. I'd go to church like twice a day. Wouldn't that be awesome? It's like a whole event though, right? They're like in a... I have no idea. Yeah. I, have, I have never gotten... It's like smoking like, peyote or something, like in the movie yeah. Zoolander where he goes... <laughs> Yeah. Smoke so much peyote that I just expanded dude, the I horizons. Have, I actually have no idea. I have no idea how this works, right? But Rogers said that he had his two best seasons because he was doing this stuff. Yeah, I think it, it's like LSD. It expands your mind. So there was a, there was actually like a um, uh, like a, not a sitcom, but like a series on uh, Netflix where there's a detective. He's trying to solve a murder. He couldn't put the pieces together. So and he, he has drugs. And he, there were no, there no psychics he, available. He went, he, yeah, there's no <laughs> Sylvia Brown wasn't available. So. <laughs> And so he, he went to a local drug dealer and actually bought something like along the lines of LSD or magic mushrooms. And then he sat in front of his at his desk with, you know, all the, you know, the, the red victims. strings. Yeah, the red strings. You know, and then he was able to, you know, obviously it's a movie, but he put it all together and he was able to identify the murderer. Wait, hold on a second. I'd like to start a group, Christians Against That Movie. Yeah, Christians <laughs> Against People Who Do Drugs in Movies. That's, yeah, drugs are wrong. Drugs are totally wrong. Okay. So, I mean, you know Rogers is like super smart, right? <laughs> like, like Mensa smart? No, yeah. He is, he no. is actually... No, no, that no bullshit. He is like Mensa smart. You know, actually, really? Madonna's Mensa smart too. <laughs> Wait a she minute. She is like Mensa smart. Like I'm talking like I don't know what Mensa is, but like 130 is like considered genius. Like, maybe like, maybe it's his emotional no. intelligence. That's, uh, <laughs> no, no, low. no. He's, I'm he's, telling you right now, like, Aaron Rodgers is like a genius. Okay, but his family's like he's completely uh, separated from his family. Like, yeah, because he's a right. genius and they're all dipshits. <laughs> it's, like, yeah. it's like Jimmy <laughs> it's Carter. Really it's like Jimmy Carter and Billy Carter. <laughs> Wait, Billy. I think they were both. He was the. He was the. He was the bigger dipshit. 
All right. So I don't know if you guys know what DMT, that diamethyl trepline is, but it's a crystal powder, okay? And you can smoke it, snort it, inject it, make it into a tea, or insert it directly into your rectum. Rectum? I, I, I knew you were near killing them. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's a thing. I mean, I, so, wait a minute. There's a thing where people did ass shots, right? Like vodka in their ass. It gets absorbed like really fast. No, I think you're thinking of like wine enemas. You take what? like a wine. There is no okay. such so, thing as a wine listen, listen. enema. In California, I think there's these enema bars where, like, you know, they'll like you know, you go in there and they and they give you an enema where, you know, they'll either flush <laughs> they'll flush you out. You go into a bar. You go into and a bar. They bu- stick something in your yes, ass. Are you hanging out with other people? It's an enema bar. Hold on a second. Hey, hey, listen, listen. For all the people that are listening at home, I'm just going to do this. Hey, everybody here. I'm, I just bought you some enemas. So everybody, we just got beer enemas. No. Um, it's. It, on the three idiots, just so you know. But okay? you, you absorb alcohol very quickly, and you could three, literally three, die. Through your anal yeah. cavity, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. An- through your <laughs> anal cavity? Yeah. I think because the nerve ending's there. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not, you know, I'm not an ad- you know, You're not an anatomy, ass doctor? <laughs> He's anatomy not an expert. ass doctor. <laughs> yeah, but I think if it's, you know, injected, or, you know, if it's, if it's pushed right up into you, yeah, you're going to get, you know, it's going to hit you like that. I feel like Ted. I feel like you are an ass expert. I feel like I feel like if, as much as Peter was a gun expert, you you could be our ass expert. Well, you know, with all the Greek jokes out there, that's obvious, right? So. Yeah. I, you know what? I never even thought of that. But do, do I have to tell that joke again? With you know the no, guy I bowled with for no, thirty weeks? No, okay, I don't want to tell that. I don't want to tell that joke Christ, again. Do not tell that <laughs> actually, joke actually, again. It's, not, it's actually not a joke. It was real. <laughs> oh, that is terrifying. But if you do, if you decide you're going to do some DMT, okay. Here's what's going to happen when you start tripping. You're going to have colorful and geometric hallucinations, okay? Profound, mystical, and spiritual ideas. And, and this one is terrifying because this one makes me think about being a Bears fan. You're going to feel calmness, euphoria, anxiety, and fear. That is, that is exactly what being a Bear fan is all about. Right. Now, this is kind of cool, speaking of Bears. The Bears ordered about 20 pounds of DMT for Justin Fields. Yeah. Yeah, so they figure anything would help. For an MVP season. Yeah, and, and here's the craziest thing. The Steelers, right, they have a, a quarterback, Mitch Trubisky, our old quarterback. Um, they are actually making Mitch Trubisky uh, take baths in the DMT. So let him trip ass and actually become a good quarterback. Is that kind of scary? The, uh, the Bears thing might work if they would have some wide receivers and an offensive line bring the DMT to Justin Fields and then – play on the team why don't you just I, I believe you know what and I hate talking sports but I feel like if the defensive players from the other team brought him the DMT it would get there quicker probably right <laughs> yeah well let's, let's hope Justin Fields is more like uh, Michael Vick and not Andre Ware before his career is over um I, you know what listen I, I Cause honestly because I, I got an Andre Ware vibe right about I, this guy no so. I honestly feel like I feel like Justin Fields would be awesome right and then all of a sudden I, now I just I don't feel good about it anymore is that weird? Well, you know, he has no excuses because before they were blaming it all on Matt Nagy, you know, that he was hamstrung, you know, uh, with the playbook. But now we got this new guy, Eber- Eberfluss. Is that his name? Eber- Matt Eberfluss, who was the defensive coordinator for the— Something like whatever. that. Yeah, Who gives so, a shit? Yeah, but never heard of the off- new offensive coordinator, but supposedly we'll see what happens. You know, I mean, it's, it's entertaining we either will. way. You know, but. I mean, so you know what? Bill Belichick was a nobody at one point, right? He got fired from Cleveland Browns. He was fired as a coach from the Cleveland Browns, but, you know. It's right, Cleveland Browns. right. I mean, he was—but he was a nobody. Right? He, I mean, at one, at one point, yeah. Bill Belichick was no one. So Matt Erflembersker, <laughs> what's his name? Dr. Gelly <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he could be that guy. All right, so I, one more thing about sports, and then we, I, I hate talking about sports, but do you guys know Paige Sparanak? No. Teddy, you know Paige Sparanak. Yeah, she's the hot chick. Gol- Does she even golf, or is she just, like, like hold a golf club and, you know, I don't So, I don't So know. here's the deal. The best way to describe Paige Sparanak is she is insanely hot. She has ginormous cans, okay? She wears very small tank tops, insanely short skirts, and gives golf tips, okay? okay. So she's not on the tour, though. No, no, no. Yeah. She's, she, is, she is literally just kind of like, like a, an influencer. Or like yeah, a, she's a social, social media, media influencer or whatever, right? And, and you know what? It's, it's, it, it, the funny thing is, is I, I can't believe anybody would pay attention to her golf tips because she's so hot, I can't imagine you would listen to anything she would say. I mean, she is that hot, yeah. okay? Maxim Magazine. Maxim, and I, you know what? Do you guys remember Maxim Magazine? It's still a thing. It's still yeah. in circulation? Yeah, it's okay. still a yeah. thing. They voted her the hottest woman alive. They literally voted her the hottest woman alive. Okay? Now, here's the deal. Okay? She mentioned that she's been in and out of therapy. Okay? For what? 
social media anxiety. Ted, Ted, she has a lot of problems. Oh, I have a social media anxiety story for you after. Just okay. remind me. Okay, so don't. Okay, yeah. go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Ted. You want to hear, hear it now? We can get back to sp- page spare now. Okay, go ahead. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, obviously, you can't stop talking about her, so of course, you're not going to forget her. <laughs> uh, Ted, Ted, when you hear what I'm talking about, you will know why we're talking so about So anyway, her. Pete Davidson. Oh, yeah. Pete Davidson um, is in some type of therapy, some social media therapy, uh, because I guess Kanye West was bullying him after he broke up with uh, Kim Kardashian. Yeah, he put a... Wait, yeah, Kanye he, West was bullying Insta- Pete, Insta- Davidson. Yeah, Pete Davidson? He put like a yeah. RIP thing that he was... Yeah, he, he, minute, he, basically, it, he basically said Skeet Davidson, called him Skeet. Wait, hold on a second, hold on a second, Teddy, hold on a second. Isn't that like p- us picking on like a seven-year-old? <laughs> Kanye West is like a billionaire. He's picking on like a half-idiot. <laughs> Well, supposedly Pete Davidson. I don't, so, can someone explain what this means? Pete Davidson has BDE. Big, <laughs> yeah. Seriously, I've heard this before. You don't it have says, to explain it. Says, it. No, I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what it means. Big dick big, energy. Big dick energy. So, does that mean he has a large member, or he just was like real good at stamina wise, or like a little bit of both? Because I mean, it's just it's just energy. Because you know, wait, hold on. Because I know I can't please Kim Kardashian with you two guys standing on my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> hold on a second. Hold on a second. If, she, if Kim Kardashian broke up with Pete Davidson, does that mean she's back to black guys? I mean, has she kind of, like, taken her deal, and she's just like, I'm done with this whole white guy thing? Well, you know, I think the best part of breaking up is when you're making up. I don't know. Maybe they'll get back together. I don't know. So, But I'm just saying, the point, the point is <laughs> what is that? he was bullied. He was bullied. Uh, you know, <laughs> Pete Davidson, who's a famous, you know, obviously a, a famous, you know, celebrity, was bullied by another famous celebrity, and that caused him to withdraw from social media and seek therapy, allegedly, for social media bullying. Well, he's got <laughs> problems already. I mean... Pete Davidson? Mental yeah. health problems, yeah. yeah. Does he really? Well, well, yeah. aren't, don't all comedians have mental health problems? Like lead singers, right? They yeah. always have to have some something wrong with them because that's their whole shtick, right? I think comedians and musicians are like very yeah. dark by yeah. their nature. Yeah. What? Like, like that guy who played The Flash, Ezra Miller. He's like a weirdo. Yeah. yeah. Dude, that guy <laughs> is out of his mind. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God, dude. He kidnapped people. He's like stalking people. And I think they made a movie, right? They, they made another movie with him. Well, they and, can't get rid of him because I guess right. he, he's so ensconced in, in like whatever Marvel, like the Flash or whatever. They can't they can't write him out of the script as much as they want to because I guess it's like a billion dollar. Well, they could franchise. just suspend them for two days and then it'd be fine. Yeah, like like Deshaun Watson. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, they they can have a good. You know what? I think that the idea would be to have a good talking to. Yeah. Right. It would be <laughs> have a good talking to yeah. with him and explain to him yeah. that kidnapping yeah. and stalking people not good. Are, are bad. Is it like talking to Jim Jones from Guyana? Uh, sir, you should <laughs> give that Kool-Aid to these 930 people. <laughs> I, I, don't, I still don't understand that. All those people did not drink that Kool-Aid voluntarily. Of no, course they, not. No, but they killed some. Some of them yeah. did, but I think some did it at, uh, at gunpoint, obviously. Okay. But I think, I think he killed like some senators, too, or something like that. Like Some senator came down to investigate Ted, what was going Ted, on, but it was all messed up. Ted, that's, all, that's another Ted, story. Listen, that's listen to me. Story. If there was a chance that we could kill all the senators by having them drink Kool-Aid, I would have them all go to Guyana. <laughs> I would honestly do that. Okay, so let's get back to Paige. Okay, so here's the deal. Okay, so Again, she recently mentioned that she'd been in and out of therapy, right? So when she was in college, she was stalked or followed closely, right? We talked about that. They're followed just, closely. You're really, really paying attention to her. That's all. You just, you know, just want to see what she was but going on. But she was stalked by some women, a group of women oh. in college, and it got really bad. It got so bad. Now, imagine this year in college, right? Number one, you have to change your name, right? She literally had to change her name in college. Sounds like they're just jealous. Well, okay, but listen, here's the worst part. She had to delete her Instagram account. Now, that's like a death sentence for something yeah, like that. Yeah, so. it was so bad that she had to delete her Instagram. Account. Or how about just transfer to another college? Ted, <laughs> this is social media. She was completely erased from that for a few minutes before <laughs> she started a new Instagram account, okay? And so here, listen, this is how it works. So she opened up on the world of social media and she let everybody know. She's like, everybody who loves me and showed me so much encouragement, um, I, I, I just want to let you know that I'm, I'm, I'm in, back in therapy, right? And I, and I thought to myself, so this woman actually believes that people care about her. Isn't that crazy? But that's the by brownie points. When, when, when any celebrity says, I'm in therapy, it shows that they're, quote, unquote, they're vulnerable and they're one of us, right? Right. Allegedly. No. <laughs> but this is so weird. Like, she actually believes that if she was, like, in some terrible accident and she became, like, this hideous creature, that people wouldn't just forget about her and move on to, like, the second hottest woman that Maxim had. Right? I mean, isn't that crazy? Yeah, they like to, people like to build people up and then knock them down. Right. right. So, so she decided that she wanted to tell everybody why she's in therapy now. Okay. Well, I, I want to know. Okay. <laughs> so I, I'm just going to 
Anybody out there in viewer land know why Paige Sparanek is in therapy right now? Because she's hitting a slice. No, <laughs> no. You know why? Because some guy got on social media and threatened to send her and her very attractive sister sperm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they th- he said that he was going to send her his sperm. Yeah. Uh, well, unless it's like cryogenically frozen, I'm not a you know I'm not an expert. But wouldn't it like die in transit because <laughs> the sperm hits the air? It's kind of useless, right? So I mean, unless it's in some type of Teddy, I have I have no idea. Who's going to send it in like pig intestines or something to keep it viable? <laughs> so the, the only thing I could think of is you send it in a tube, or you just wrap up the sock, put it in a box, and you send it to her, right? I mean, there's only two ways you get sperm, right? In a tube and in a sock, yeah. right? <laughs> That's where sperm's found the most in a sock. In a yeah, sock, a crusty I mean, sock. Obviously. So. so, and here's my thing. I feel like she did a dumb thing, right, by telling everybody that she's going to get sperm. Yeah, you know what? Because she just gave this guy oxygen. She just gave this guy oxygen. Now he's a celebrity because now she basically parroted what the threat, alleged threat was against her. If and he's now, a celebrity, it would only be on the dark web. Not yeah. on the <laughs> no, I'm just saying, but she made this guy, whoever threatened to do this like she made him sort of a pseudo celebrity by even mentioning no not at all ted that's not it at all you you realize she's going to get gallons and gallons of sperm <laughs> in the mail right i mean i listen i'm not saying i'm not saying that i've been saving up for the last week to send it to her but what i'm saying is i've been saving it up for the last week to send it to her i mean you know what i mean why not and you know what i looked it up it's completely legal you can donate sperm Anywhere, as many times as you want. Sperm banks, porn theaters, Page Bear Next House. It's all totally legal. There's a TV show, uh, Netflix or something, where some guy, he helped this woman get pregnant. He's a sperm donor. Wait, hold on. Does help mean had sex with her? No, he's a sperm donor. And, uh, <laughs> and then he went on to donate sperm. Because I guess in America, it's like the wild, wild west. In other countries, they, they uh, track it very carefully. But he's got like 100 siblings or kids and the trouble is that those kids don't know that they're siblings. So if they were to somehow get together, that would be a problem, you know. So you think a hundred kids? You think there's a chance that a hundred, well, somewhere in a hundred kids? So here's how weird it gets. Some girl, one of his daughters, I think the first one, um, she was in some little tiny art school in Italy, and she met and found out that one of her sisters, who was you know a sperm. Wait, but two chicks can't. Two chicks no, can't. So that's fine. Hold but, on. Yeah, nope. John, Johnny, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Yeah, that's. Yeah, but I'm just saying. So I'm just saying. There's, <laughs> yeah, I just. That's not a baby. Dude. I'm just saying. There's two of them it's there. Not art class. That was such a weird. <laughs> they were halfway across the country and they met, so it could could be a boy and a girl as well. You know. That seems so weird well, to me. Here's a funny story from China. So in China, <laughs> this actually reminded me. This is something a little bit off topic, but so uh, COVID. A, a woman's no, a woman has her kid, her daughter in kindergarten. And there's a male um, student there who's also about the same age, and it turns out that the male boy was his his her husband's mist from her mistress, unbeknownst to her. What? So that was like a gut punch. And then 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 she died. No, then I don't I don't understand. When you get punched in the gut, you die. She was (laughs) Houdini, right? She was just she was just in shock. That is really weird, man. What are the ads? Now see, what are the ads of that? See, that kind of what we were speaking to. So. That seems crazy. Yeah, I think most countries, like, they limit how many uh, times you can donate sperm. But in America, apparently, it's crazy. Well, there's a, there's a, guy, there's a guy I actually just read <laughs> I about feel, this. But you know what? When you say, like, you know, we talked about last week, um, there's like half a billion guns in America, right? And now there's like half a billion guys who are sharing the seed, right? Is that, I mean, God, that's crazy. So hold on a second. I just want to look out at our, our guests right now, okay? I just want to think about it. Oh, they're still here. Oh, how many of these people are related, man? And they don't even know it. That is that is terrifying. That is, that is absolutely terrifying. Ted? Well, you don't look like anybody in this room, so I think you're okay. I, I, Ted, I should look like a couple of people in a room. My kids are here. Yeah. Are they? <laughs> Which one's your favorite? Oh, I love that. that so, Maury po- Mor- Mor- Povich, you are... Not the father. Oh, dude. That I, is... I love that show, by the way. I can't, you know, that's only like when you're like unemployed in your home at like two in the afternoon. That's the only time that show's on. Listen. So listen, you can take the day off. The, the greatest line. I couldn't line, stop watching it. The greatest <laughs> line in any Maury Povich show is this. Is there anyone else you might have had sex with at that party? I lo- that's, my, that's my favorite line of all time, man. I, I remember the show where they brought the same woman back like ten times. Yes. <laughs> yes. And they kept asking her. Listen, we went through the first 37 guys. <laughs> was there anyone else you might have had sex with? And then she went like this. She went, no, nah, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. So listen, guys, I think one of the important things when you're doing this is you got to listen to the show all the time to stay informed, right? Because you, you, listen, if you listen do, to this do, show, do you? you don't want to miss a minute. <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, if you, if you, if you listen to the show, you can stay informed and you don't do something stupid, right? But unfortunately, someone who doesn't listen to the show did something stupid. So I don't know if you guys know this. You guys heard of Machine Gun Kelly? Yeah, right. he's that one going out with that Megan Fox. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And we talked about that, he look, he right? Look, he looks like an angrier, younger version of Eminem. He's like all tatted up and he's blonde hair. He's tall. He's like a rapper, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, kind of yeah, like so. a singer, rapper. He's kind of, I don't know, he kind of sings like pussy songs. I feel like I feel like Machine Gun Kelly has been like jilted by everybody. But you know what? He's got, he's got Megan Fox. She's like 20 years older than him. So I doubt that she'll leave. I honestly she's, doubt that she'll leave. No, she's not going anywhere. She's got a bad thumb. <laughs> she's got a what? She has like a toe thumb. Oh, that's gross. Yeah. Oh, well, at least somebody's It's like a Velociraptor it. prehensile. Like it- oh, that is nasty. Okay, so Machine Gun Kelly, one of his tour buses was vandalized. Okay? Okay. All right, so somebody wrote a homophobic slur on it. They called him a demon and drew a picture of a big dick on it. Okay? Is that homophobic or is that just... <laughs> no, there was some words. There were some words oh, written on I it see. that were, you know, yeah. that were totally inappropriate. And now here's what I'm thinking right now. If they had listened to the show... They would know that he's not gay at all, right? That he is dating Megan Fox. He's, I mean, so I feel like, like, I don't know if he's a demon, and I don't know if he has a gi- gigantic penis, but, I mean, that'd be kind of unfair if he can sing that well and, you know, well, and have a giant penis. Yeah, yeah. But, so I feel like if they listened to the show, they would have vandalized better. They would have done it better, right? So here's what I said. Listen to the show. We will tell everyone who is gay and who is straight so that you can vandalize their stuff accurately. Or who's non-binary. Well, then what are you going to do then? <laughs> hey, listen, as, as long as they know, they won't do bad vandalism. Uh, I don't know, but are your graffiti will be in, like, base three or base four or whatever. <laughs> yeah, did, wait, I, didn't that happen in Nebraska? He was, like, in Nebraska yeah, or something. In Omaha. Like, yeah, in Omaha, Omaha yeah, right? Yeah. So, so here's what I want to do. I want to make sure that you listen to the show so that you don't look stupid in front of your friends or say if you're a governor of a state just south of Georgia, you don't want to look stupid in front of any of your voters, okay? So listen to the show. We'll let you know how to vandalize properly so that you don't make any, you know, really dumb mistakes. Actually, my favorite stories are the people who, like, self-vandalize and then say someone else did what? it and then they get busted. I love those people. Wait, so on the count of three, are we all going to say straight or gay? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can we just look at Ted? <laughs> T- Ted, have you vandalized recently? No, but I'm saying there's people that, that, you know, for example, I think people who accuse others of, like, like racist vandalism, and it turned out that they actually vandalized themselves to gain sympathy, and then, you know, they use, they use some forensic FBI like the, investigation, and it turns out it's them and not... Like the actor Wait, in so Chicago. The, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> the FBI gets involved in vandalism. Well, if it's, like, a federal offense, you know, if it's, like, a high-profile wow, Wait, what celebrity. kind of vandalism is a federal offense? Uh, like, could you imagine? Not, not, not federal, what would you but, have you know, to do? Like, well, kidnapping, to... bank robbery, you know, but, uh, well, ju- vandalism, ju- juicy, Ted. juicy smoule, perfect but example. he didn't vandalize no, himself, I mean, did but, he? But he staged a hate crime that he, to this day he still denies it. Oh, and you no know, way and, and, he and, doesn't. And, and you know why the jury didn't believe him? And there were African Americans on the jury because I guess when supposedly he's walking around at two in the morning with a noose in Chicago, <laughs> 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 looking yes. for a subway state, and it's like twenty degrees below zero. So these two MAGA followers put a noose yeah. around his neck. Ted, we know he that keeps, story. But he keeps yeah. a noose on his neck for like an hour and a half. <laughs> He's like, you know, and so the person on the jury said like, no. Teddy, let me no ask you a question. Have a you ever had neck. a noose around your neck? Well, we'll just, you know, just. Have you ever had a noose around your neck? I mean, how I, would you know you wouldn't keep it on for a while? I feel like I have one now, you know. <laughs> Only until he's about to pass out. <laughs> Dave, the David Carradine experience. That, you know what? That would be a gr- There should be an amusement park. And instead of rides... Just really weird shit that's happened, and you can experience it. So you can be Jesse Smollett, or you can be David Carradine getting choked out by your own. Isn't it called, like, autoerotic strangulation? Is that what you're referring to? How do you know that? You are such a terrifying dude. You are honestly a terrifying dude. Okay. I'm, I'm just gonna... saying what you're thinking, man. You have no <laughs> idea what I'm thinking. All right, so I'm going to blow your mind, okay? Um, I don't know if you guys know this. Tammy Duckworth is a Democratic senator, or was a Democratic senator from the great state of Illinois, Okay. She was the first sitting senator to give birth in the United States of America. Is that wild? Isn't she like an amputee as well? Isn't she missing like a leg or like an arm? Oh, because there are no women women senators. Well, hold on. Hold hold on. There's been 58 female senators in, in America. And that's, that's, listen, it's pretty equal. There's only been 1,917 male senators. So it's pretty, it's pretty equal, right? So no young female senators. 
well, no reproductive, right? No right. reproductive ones. Now, this is weird. In 1978, and this is the weirdest thing. So when I started looking at this, I was just like, what the hell? Nancy Kassenbaum was the first woman, and this is so bizarre, to serve a full term in the Senate whose husband hadn't previously served. So I want you to think about this. She's the first woman to serve six years whose husband hadn't been a senator before her. Well, here's the other thing. I, I have no idea if this is true, but I bet, <laughs> I bet you no, no Supreme Court justice has ever given birth. They're all 9,000 years old. Well, but there are females on there. But that's my point. There are females, a few, very rare, and they're older. Yeah. That's, wow. You know what? That is so bizarre. <laughs> I'm freaking out right now. <laughs> well, that Amy Coney Barrett one, she looks like she's a, a child well, now bearing she could, potential. Yeah, yeah, I think so. she Wait, are you, kid, so. are you hotting up a, no, I'm just a Supreme she, Court no, justice? No, I'm just saying she looks like she's you know, of childbearing age. She's like in her 30s or 40s or something. So. Okay, so the, re- the only reason I bring this up is this, okay? A couple of fellas over at Fox News were also celebrating women, all right? Because, I, I mean, I think we want to celebrate women all the time, right? And they were talking about what a woman needs to do in order to be president. All right? Think this about it. This should be good. Oh, what? Ted, don't, go ahead. Don't, don't have an email server in your closet in upstate New York? <laughs> <laughs> That is, such, you know what? I, I swear to God, you know, for all, man, I can't even. I'm not going to get into that, okay? But these guys figured out how a woman could be president, um, and what she has to do. Yeah, I can tell you right now. Uh, Joe Biden drops dead, and tomorrow Kamala Harris is the president. End That's sorry. <laughs> well, no, I'm talking about being elected. Kamala. Oh, Kamala. Yeah. Wait, wasn't there a wrestler called Kamala? <laughs> or Kam- mm. The wrestler, what? the wrestler guy from the '80s, was, his name was Kamala. He was like a big African dude. He had, he had the African garb on. His name was Kamala. Google it. It's pretty yeah, funny. You know, I'm not going <laughs> to just think about that. We don't, just went on six tangents. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Teddy. Teddy. <laughs> the only guy who Google's anything is Johnny. So okay, but listen, they figured it out, and here's what they did. So they said first they compared a woman to a green banana, okay, and they said she's too young and not ripe enough if she's green banana. Well, you know who's going to run is that AOC, <laughs> that Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. She talking. can't. She's too young. Yeah, but when she's 35, you know, she's going to be around. But will she be a green banana, according to the Fox guys? Will she be a green banana? Okay. So I, I bet you're saying to yourself, who would compare a woman to a green banana and ask if she's ripe enough to be president, right? So Fox News did that. My buddy, Greg Gutfeld. Okay. Do you remember Greg Gutfeld? Yeah. Yeah, you remember him? Well, I don't. He's still there. He's not like he's uh, gone. <laughs> well, he, he's my buddy that re, uh, that uh, uh, compared teachers' unions to KKKs with the summers off. You remember him? Yeah. Oh, and I remember him. Yeah. 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 Actually, the show was very popular. I think right behind Tucker Carlson. To be honest with you. You know what? It's not popular with me. Today. <laughs> I, I do not listen. Okay. So he said, number one, they have to be not green so that they can be ripe enough to be president. Number two, they have to get married. They said no woman would ever be president without being married. Can she be married to another woman? I'm 100% sure the Fox <laughs> News guys are, are not saying that she could be married to another woman. Wait, I'm there, was, there was a male president. I can't think of who it was, but he was like one of the only ones that was, he was elected president, and he, and he wasn't married. I can't think of who it was, though. This is like back in the 1800s or something, but, you know, it's back happened. Back in the 1800s? Whatever, 19, early 1900s, but there is a president. I have no idea. Yeah, Dude, I, I, have I have no right. idea. I have no idea. He probably got assassinated. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> So, so security wait, was kind of lax back then. So, know, are so. we saying are we saying all the non-married presidents have been murdered? No, is the, this a thing? No, they probably, just had, one, no, probably just had right? mistresses, you know. So I, I have no idea. Okay, so number one, be not green. Number two, get married. Number three, get pregnant. Yeah, sounds pretty misogynistic. I mean, what does this have to do with the qualifications to be the president? Listen, this is what listen. This is what Fox News says. Uh, 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 somebody has to be a woman has to be to be president. They're saying they have to be pregnant, but this is kind of tricky. They wouldn't get elected president if they were pregnant at the time because, you know, they're going to take like three months off to, you know, after they have a kid. You know, like to Denmark, just do nothing. Well, I think Denmark, they give you two years off. What? Yeah. Denmark, Denmark or Norway, I think they give you two years off for uh, So there's no women presidents because you, <laughs> you can't have somebody who's not a president well, for Pete, two years. Didn't Pete Buttigieg, the uh, gay uh, hold on a second. secretary Ted, Ted, of Ted, transportation? Ted, he, he cannot get pregnant. No, but he took, like, he took maternity leave. He took his, he took his to chest six weeks to, to or chest feed his. Yeah. Kid, <laughs> he's he's not, kid. I'm not making this he, up. He, no, he did not take any. He did yes, not take yes, it off yes. to chest feed yeah. anybody. That's yeah. ridiculous. It is ridiculous, but yeah. that's true. That's no, okay. that's not a thing. All right. Okay, so I Google it. <sighs> I, I not, guarantee not, not you. Not this, not this I guarantee you, there will be nothing on Google about chest feeding. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you are terrifying. But here's what they said. So after she's uh, ripe enough, I guess old enough, after she's had a couple of kids, after she's married, um, and she's proven she is mature enough, she can be president of the United States. So I'm pretty excited about that. So I'm just going to do this. For all the women out there who have gotten married, who have had kids, and you are over the age of 35, Fox News says run for president because I'm excited about this, man. Or if you just need any kind of female advice, just go to Fox News, right? Yeah, female advice. Yeah, to, to the guys, to the old white guys. And honestly, honestly, that is the most terrifying thing I have. I, yeah. I, I, listen to the, I listen to them talk, and it just, it just scares the shit out of me every time. All right. Um, so one of the last things, and then we're getting out of here, okay? Um, theoretically. The, the, well, theoretically, yeah. We're going to – wait. We can't say that. I know what not to say right now, Anne Hesh. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, North Korea is going to send 100,000 volu- 100, volunteers. Yeah, more like voluntolds. <laughs> right, well, yeah, yeah, over to the Ukraine to fight, okay? And I looked it up, and in— Wait, uh, against the Ukrainians or for the Ukrainians? Against the Ukrainians. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. They're, they're teaming up with the Russians. Yeah. And this is weird. There is no word in Korean for volunteer. <laughs> Yeah, there is no word. I actually, I looked it up, and the closest I could find was a phrase that means, I will murder your family if you don't do this right now. Yeah. So this is kind of cool, right? So they're going over there. It's called salesmanship. I, that's all. Listen, but here's what I'm thinking. If, you, if you're going with North Korea as your friend, who is left after that? If yeah. North Korea doesn't help you, I mean, what do you have left? Yeah. The only thing I could think of is Syria. That's it. That's your new best friend, Syria. It's not good. No, that's a terrible. It's a terrible deal, right? I mean, like, do you even want to be friends with Kim Jong Un? I would not. Well, Dennis no. Rodman does. Dennis, was, Dennis Rodman's listen, his buddy. Listen, Dennis Rodman would. Dennis Rodman would literally do anything that he could. Anything that he so, could. So, so I heard. Um, I don't have the stats at my fingertips, but supposedly they're estimating the Russian losses at somewhere between seventy to eighty thousand men. Are people. I don't oh, know. thank I don't you know very much. I don't know if they have female soldiers in Russia, but um, that's insane. That's an insanely high number. You know, and, and, and I keep thinking this. Why do the Russian soldiers keep doing this? Why not just go to Ukraine and keep on walking? They, a lot of them are. Um, they have, they're not like, it's, there's, um, they've like taken people from like the poor areas of Russia and they're exploiting kind of the people who are not. Um, so they're kind of like the stupid people? People who don't have a lot of choice in the matter, kind of, I think. All right, Ted, when are you going to Ukraine? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, so this is weird. I, I, I forgot about this, and I can't let this go. Um, this is something that has never happened before in history, okay? Um, three 50-plus-year-old Asian women were arrested in a massage parlor for prostitution. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of that reminds me of my favorite story. Um, oh, it, a few years ago, we were in uh, Kendallville, Indiana, small town, um, oh, doing some, doing awesome. some golfing, and there was one massage parlor in that town, and I think there was a 75 year old woman and a 6 year old woman, and they were busted for prostitution. It was big news in the local paper. There. It was, and uh, it was, it was awesome. And I was thinking, how much of an undercover sting operation do they have to <laughs> conduct in order to in order to? Um... So that's that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> that is exactly what I was thinking. So so one of the guys says, "All right, all right, fellas, I I need somebody to go into the uh, I need somebody to go into the." Uh, Local massage okay, parlor. Okay, we got a happy ending. Yeah, happy get, ending at three yeah, o'clock. Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. So here's the funny wax thing. Wax on, wax off. Don't, got don't arrest anyone until there's an actual. Well, know. until an actual you, ejaculation. No. <laughs> <laughs> that is terrifying. And then immediately send it to who's the, who are we send our... it. <laughs> oh, the the golfer. Oh, Paige Sparinet. Yeah. yeah, as soon as you finish, uh, take, your, yeah, t- take your finish and send it over to her. So here's what they were arrested for. Are you ready? So the women were arrested for prostitution and sexual battery. And you ready for this? Masturbation for hire. <laughs> Which I think is completely different than masturbation for fun. Yes, right? definitely. But, but here's what I'm thinking. Sexual battery. So I'm thinking when the cops went in there or whoever went in there, the ladies just got a little aggressive, right? And then somebody got upset and, and kind of turned her in. Maybe someone got hit, you know. What? what? You saying a ball shot? <laughs> that, is, that is absolutely terrifying, man. Well, see, here's, that's why it's funny, the, the, the cultural differences in America versus mm-hmm. other parts of the world. So, for example, not that I know this personally, but happy endings in other countries, that's actually standard operating procedure. I mean, 
<laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. Hey. You know, happy ending. You know, it's just part of doing business. And I know? now pronounce you man and wife. So I, th- I think <laughs> and in, they just what? I think in <laughs> Thailand at one point, so there was a law that came out that said the women could not use their hands on uh, a man. So they were using their wrists. That is like not that. what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> that is honestly not what I thought you were going to say. Do I need to visualize Wait, demonstrate this? And they so also, these women were giving wrist jobs. Yep. <laughs> That's not a thing. And they also banned uh, Flappuccinos. That's a female version of a tea bag. <laughs> I'm going to have to Google that one. I never heard of that one. Dude, that is... So, wait a minute. So, wait a minute. They actually had a rule where you couldn't use your hands, but you could elbow a guy to completion. Well, they probably didn't say you could do it. They just said you can't use your hands. So, if they didn't use your hands, they're probably okay, right? That is is the... That is the scariest thing I have wait, ever wait, heard of it, in my didn't life. Didn't Robert Kraft, who's worth a billion dollars, the owner of the Patriots, didn't he get busted yeah. for prostitution in Florida? But they were videotaping it, and he yep. basically, his lawyers got the case thrown out because it was like an invasion of privacy. But right. basically, he got jerked off for forty bucks. <laughs> That's what happened. Forty? No, come on, sixty it, bucks. If you're, if you <laughs> it was under own, 100. <laughs> If you own a team, you have to pay a little bit more, right? There has to be like, like you have to be Texas style with the thumb, right? <laughs> there has to be more to it than that. No, well, they had that lady madam, right? Who was. Uh, a madam to all the really, really uh, Oh, you're thinking well of Heidi Fleiss. Yeah. Heidi Fleiss, yeah. Right. So there are people who are more upscale, right? They, see, that's why I wanted to win the lottery, the $1.2 billion. From Des Plaines. Right? Somebody because Plaines, yeah. Well, no, because I wanted to, I wanted, instead of going to a hooker, <laughs> I wanted to go to a call girl. Or a madam. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, I mean, wouldn't that be, doesn't so, that seem so classier? Wait, there's escort, call girl, hooker. Prostitute. So, are we talking about? Is this like the food chain of it's like? A, it's yeah. uh, Maslow's hierarchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Needs, yeah. we've just we we we've, we've just covered it. That, I love that. Okay, so I you know what I did forget this. I keep saying we're going to stop, but I did forget this. So, um, with all the mass shootings, I don't know if you guys heard this, but Asheville, North Carolina, has come up with a new idea for this school year, and this is the most terrifying thing I have ever heard. Every school in the county in Asheville is getting an AR-15. Extra magazines and extra ammo in a gun safe where the school resource officer can get in there in case there's an active shooter. And I want everyone in the audience to look under your seats because <laughs> someone gets an AR-15. <laughs> <laughs> you get an AR-15. You get an AR-15. Oh, Oprah Winfrey right now is turning yeah. over in her vat of gluten. I don't yeah. know what she does. I have yeah. no idea. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, who, who goes and gets the AR-15, right? Well, listen. I, so, well, it, by the time you get to the safe and 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 do the dial with the lock, to, couldn't the active shooter? You know, there's already, other. You know, there's other ways to do it besides yeah, a dial. I mean, test. If you, <laughs> you know, there's numbers you there's, can press. There's numbers. There's, if you, if there's you, keys. Yeah. You know, if you yeah. want a good one on guns and yeah. safes, uh, Google uh, the stand-up, the Australian guy who does the gun. He does a whole routine on guns, and someone actually broke into his house with a gun, right? And he had what? a gun in a gun safe, supposedly, and he's like running over to the safe, and he's like. How long hold does it take, how does like, it take to get to the gun safe? No, so exactly. He's like, hold on there. Hold on a second. He goes, hold on. He's like, what's the combination? Yeah. What? Your mother's birthday. Why the fuck would I know your mother's <laughs> birthday? He's like, when I get this gun safe open, you are in charge. No, can, listen. Can, can you count to five real slow? <laughs> listen, so, so as soon as I heard this, right, I had to go to our – I had to go to Mr. Gun. I, I texted yeah. Peter, Alexopoulos, and I asked him, what do you think of this, right? And, and this is why he is the best. And he, listen, if you ever need help with guns, this is why you have to go to Peter, right? The first thing he said is, there's a lot of factors, right? He said he didn't say it was good or bad. And he said, here's what I'm thinking, right? He said, training. Right. Who will have access? And there's a lot of other things. He said, but the thing that impressed me the most was he said, before we do any of that, deterrence is the first component. What can we do to actually stop people from wanting to be an active shooter rather than putting guns in a school. I thought that was crazy. I was like, that's why this guy is the best, right? Because I wanted to knee-jerk reaction, right? I wanted to like go, hey, man, I've been in a school for 25 years. This is what I know is going to happen. Whoever is in charge of that is not going to be there on some days. So the first thing he's going to do is tell some other people what the combination is <laughs> just in case he's not there or he's too drunk to go ahead and shoot somebody because you don't want to shoot somebody when you're drunk. Just not go in school. to just go to Uvalde, right? That there, we still don't even have any idea if the door that the guy got through was locked, if it wasn't locked, if it was propped open or whatever. I mean, you know what it's like with you know what I mean. Just trying to maintain things, and there's right. a gun safe with a 
AR-15 in there? That's ridiculous. It, it does seem kind of scary, though, right? I mean, here's my thing. If you didn't have a gun and you were smart enough because, honestly, everything's going to be talked about in a school. I mean, if, you've, if you haven't been in a school, and most of you have graduated from grammar school, you graduated from high school, and thank God you will never be in another school again as long as you live until your, te- until your kid's teacher says, uh, listen, I, I, need to, I need you to come in. Um, does, does Johnny wear underwear at home? Yeah, this is, this is how, this is how <laughs> right? once they start storing those guns in the gun safes in the school, this is how every... Um, teacher student conversation ends all right you understand timmy now you won't do that anymore right and by the way stay away from the gun safe no no it's just the opposite (laughs) it's like timmy you understand not to do that again right because i know the combination to the goddamn gun safe (laughs) right wouldn't it just be easier to build like a perimeter fence around the school almost like a prison with barbed wire and have like a moat with alligators in it so the person can't even get on the premises i mean because seriously if someone walks in and, and, and you have a gun that's fully loaded with your finger on the trigger by the time you get to the gun safe by the time you even walk to the gun safe you've already fired like 100 rounds what right i mean once you start doing this i mean and you're running to the safe i mean you ever see you ever see the, the wild west shootouts the guy's got his gun right here and you still can't get out in time i mean how are you gonna combat someone with a gun who's already on you like that well i no, i think what they're saying is if, if this happens he's gonna you know be able to get to it at a, at a certain you know reasonable right. thing or, or he's bruce willis right or arnold schwarzenegger or steven seagal right and he's just gonna you know well i think none of those guys have <laughs> none of those guys have jobs right so they can just go ahead and be school resource officers in, in north carolina i mean is is bruce arnold willis doing is, is he really no, he's not yeah. dying he's just forgetful <laughs> he's, got, he's got some it's not like alzheimer's it's like some other is it? Condi- and i guess they talked about degenerative. they basically said like i guess like all his movie roles he went from like a fast talker to like is like one like he went to one liners and they said they did that because of his deteriorating mental condition not to change the subject for a second no wait hold on a second bruce willis is dying no he's not dying i think he's just you know, he's got like some type of alzheimer's i, I don't know what, what the how many diehards were there i mean i feel like he's he's hard to die and i know we have to end but i just have to bring up aston aston kutcher like, did you really? I, for is, two years, the guy couldn't see, hear, walk. What? Yeah. He's got some autoimmune disorder. He's over it now. But his vision was impacted. His hearing was impacted. His uh, equilibrium was impacted. What, what did he have? For two years. Um, did he have a severe case of Demi Moore? <laughs> <laughs> Vasculitis. It's some sort of autoimmune inflammatory did, thing in the blood vessels. Hold on a second. I feel like he's had a really great life. Demi yeah. Moore, Mila Kunis. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's and had I, and some and really I'm, good... And I'm, sure, and I'm sure he didn't have the best doctors giving him round-the-clock 24-7 care in his, in his uh, $14 million mansion while he was going through all that. Right? Yeah. I still wouldn't want to go through no, that for two years. Not. But yeah. if he did... No, but who's helping Ted right now? <laughs> no one. Wait. The attendant at the YMCA. That's what's yeah. helping me, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> the Turkish bath. All right. <laughs> All right, we, are, we, we, we have to stop here. But I, I didn't do this the entire time, and I, I feel terrible because we're at a live place, and I haven't said anything about this awesome place that we're at, okay? Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and just run through this. I feel terrible. And I'm sure as we leave, um, somebody who works here is going to kick the <gasps> oh. shit out of me. <laughs> I didn't say the other thing, okay? But um, this fantastic place was started about 10 years ago. Okay, so where we are right now at, at uh, 1090 Brewery, we started about 10 years ago, okay? And this is their phrase, and I thought this was kind of cool because this kind of this kind of describes us. 1090 is craft beer elevated. Isn't that cool? Craft beer elevated. I like that. I know, because I feel like the Real 3DS podcast is a podcast de-elevated. What's, what's the opposite of elevated? Decline? <laughs> Sh- shoved into the ground? Ted. For... <laughs> Here's my resignation, by the way. It's all right. <laughs> oh, Ted, if you quit, we could easily replace you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. I, in about 10 seconds. Okay, so just Are you going case... to Wally Pip me? Wait, is it Wally Pip? Wally Pip, yeah. Who was Wally Pip? He was the first baseman for the Yankees back in the 20s, and then he got sick one day, and then Lou Gehrig took his place, and he never saw the <laughs> So, never wait, saw did Wally Pip get Lou Gehrig disease before Lou Gehrig did? Wally? No. <laughs> did, Wally... Wait, did Lou Gehrig give Wally Pip? Lou Gehrig disease? Well, I think the, they, they I think, think so. I think the expression Wally Pip when you've been Wally Pipped, which is not a real thing. It's just it just means that somebody better came along, took Our, your spot, and you never got it back. Pete Best, it was, it was Pete to be, Best and oh, from the dr- the drummer, yeah. So, oh, yeah. okay. So so the real three idiots would like to uh, we we'd like to go ahead and just welcome whoever takes Ted's <laughs> place after he was Lou Gehrig with Wally Pips. I don't I don't know. Okay, so um, <laughs> before welcome Howard Stern. <laughs> 
before we go, I want to say that at 1090 Brewing, um, on Wednesdays, they have trivia night. Um, they have private events uh, from 20 to 150 people. And I can tell you right now that the brewery room can hold about 30 people um, who are absolutely, luckily, very drunk for us and kind of laughed half the time, some of the time, whatever. <laughs> they, were, they were just being polite. They were being polite, yeah. You know, they just felt sorry for you, that's all. You know, they just, you know. They felt sorry for me? They felt sorry for me? They were just patronizing you. Oh, man. As was I. Oh, man. I'm for that the, guy? For the last 30 episodes. Son of a bitch. <laughs> you know what? I tell everybody, I'm just, I'm just like, oh, yeah, you, you'll enjoy the show, right? And then, and then you know, we'll make fun of Ted. But now I feel like Thanks you're a lot. making fun of me, Ted. Thanks a lot, Ted. Now you've given him social media anxiety. <laughs> we were never laughing with you. Yeah. We were laughing at you. Okay. It's like, have... my, like my golf game, you know. <laughs> All right. If you have extra sperm, you're not going to send a Paige Baranek. Just go ahead and send it to me. I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? I, I would only like socks. And crusty socks. Crusty socks. Yeah, that's all I want is crusty socks. It's all protein okay. anyway. It's good for your skin. <laughs> uh, Ted, I'm not letting you rub <laughs> anybody's crusty socks on my face. You you realize? Do you have no idea how uncomfortable that scenario was? I remember exactly where we were. We had just had the worst Mexican food of all time. That was. I I was actually shocked that we could have that bad of Mexican food in Arizona, but it happened. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then, then we ended up at a pizza place after all that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm driving home. I'm, dri- I'm driving back from there. And, you know, I've had a couple of beers. And Ted's just doing this. A couple. Everything's going <laughs> to everything's gonna be okay. And I'm like, nothing's going to be okay. Precious. Yeah. You're rubbing oil of Olay on me. There's nothing that's going to be better about this in my whole life. All right. So if you are at uh, – uh, <laughs> I can't do this. Um, 1090 Brewery, you can contact them at 224-432-5427 or check them out on Facebook and Instagram. And let me go ahead and say this. I want to plug what we're doing next week. Um, next week, we have a mindset coach coming, okay? Um, and Theoretically. She will, no, no. Wait, no there's is no, that like a life coach or a mindset coach? So she's kind of like a mindset life coach, yeah. right? Fitness enthusiast, a writer, and a speaker. Her name is Jen Rose. And I guarantee you she is going to show up because I know where she lives, okay? <laughs> so there is no doubt about it, right? And she actually said, Ted, that she can help you. I'd like to see that. Yeah, so would I. I think everyone would like to see that. Okay, so Teddy, before we get out of here, I'm going to give you, again, first crack at this. The last thing you want to say before we get the heck out of this, first live show at 1090 Brewery. It was really exciting being seen in public by a real human being, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, Ted, and by not, the way, I, there's so not many... Not hidden away in Matt's basement. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's so many people that are like, is, it's so funny. when I, I, I call, I have called so many people to be on the show as guests, right? And they're like, okay, and they listen to the show, and then they call me back, and they say no immediately, right? But the first thing they say is, is Ted real, or is this whole thing scripted? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, no, no, Ted, Ted is real. And she's like, no, that's bullshit. There's nobody that can act like that and be like that. I'm like, no. It's Ted. And I go, you have to come on the show to, to see it. And she's like, absolutely not. They, they all say the exact same thing. Absolutely not. All right, Johnny, last thing you want to leave. I, I just want to thank 1090 Brewery. It was a great uh, experience. And I found out a little trivia. Hopefully I don't ruin any future trivia shows. But apparently 1090 was the first, the original gravity reading of the first beer he brewed here, supposedly. What is what are we ten nine? What does that mean? Gravity brewing? Yeah, it's a weird thing. It's like a I'm not a beer aficionado, but I think it has something to do with the amount of dissolved sugars in the. So it's a brewing technique. Yeah, like roasted yeah. chicken. It's like some <laughs> measurement, some measurement, and 1090 was the first one he ever brewed, supposedly. Wow. You know what? This is why I, I it's feel not like their address. No, it is not their address. So, so it's 1025 Waukegan Road right. is their address. But this is why sometimes I feel like the dumbest guy on this show. Because there are things that Ted knows that I don't know. And there's a million things that John knows that I don't know. Right? And here's what I know. I don't know. I, don't know. I just don't know it's that. It's good to know that you don't know, though, right? That's it's, something. Oh, that's depressing. That is, that is not <laughs> no. a thing. All right. Listen. Uh, thank you to everybody who's going to listen. Thank you to everyone who showed up it was fantastic it is so neat to not be in my basement because there are so many things i do in my basement that are unspeakable and they're all you know they're all really just masturbation okay but still it is so great to see everybody it's so great to be here um we're looking forward to being here next week unless you know the people at 1090 brewery get smart and say don't ever come back uh thanks for being here thanks everybody and we will see you guys all next week 